of the issue of connectivity. Uh, you have right to my left, Keisha Knight Pulliam. Of course, you know her from the Cosby Show, actress, uh, also new mom. She's done all kind of stuff. I want to talk, want to talk about new projects as well. And so Dan Ford, president, HBCU, uh, Atlanta, Atlanta HBCU Alliance. What's up? How's it going? Y'all good? Yeah. All right. What sweater is that? Representing North Carolina a &T all day. Okay, <laughs> all right then. The yeah. other Aggies. I'm a Texas A&M Aggie. All right. Uh, that's the other Aggies. Uh, and we, uh, say it again? Say it again? All right, don't be talking back there. You know, <laughs> don't think I don't hear everything back there. Also, Gerard Murray, owner and founder of Tradition. What is Tradition? Uh, Tradition is a collegiate lifestyle brand. We embody the history and the, uh, the uh, legacy and the, and the pride of all the colleges we touch on with a strong emphasis on the HBCUs. All right, then. So, Keisha, I, I want to ask you this question here. Mm -hmm. So, one of the things that we have talked to a lot about, um, and, and Spelman women, more so than a lot of other HBCUs, understand the impact of giving. Mm -hmm. uh, and w what really bugs me, it really bugs me, when I see HBCU grads talk about their love and their fervor until you ask them when the last time you wrote a check. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and it trips me out. I don't care where you go. I've talked to people who are Hampton graduates, Howard graduates, FAMU, Fisk, and they go, oh, uh, and you know, why didn't you attend the HBCU? Or why didn't you go, all this sort of stuff? And I go, why aren't you sending a check back? Mm -hmm. So we can't talk about the value of our institutions and how much they meant to us if we're not doing what the previous folks did Absolutely. to ensure they're still there. Absolutely. Um, and I believe in that um, from a philanthropic standpoint and, and, and also in terms of giving. I was a Bonner Scholar when I was at Spelman College, which is a community service-based scholarship. So that, you know, was the forerunner to my nonprofit, the Camp Kizzy Foundation, which is about empowerment and self-esteem for girls. And it's very much been um, a segue to I have girls now who graduated from Spelman College who are still attending Spelman College who come through my nonprofit. But in addition to that, you know, I worked with a group of women several years ago and we raised and one luncheon, a million dollars towards scholarship. It was Rosalind Brewer, who is now um, CEO of Starbucks, Starbucks as mm -hmm. well as Millie Smith and a, and a group of other women. In addition to that, um, you know, I've done different shows where you have winnings and, you know, I've given personal donations, but also um, my winnings in terms of donating to Spelman College have been upwards of, you know, 40000 you know, for that. Because it's important. You have to give back. The reality is, even with having a nonprofit, you realize it takes money, even though it's a nonprofit and the services that we're giving are free um, to our kids. There's still a value that you have to have to pay for stuff. So, if you want to continue to see it, it's important to you know be present. Time is also valuable. How do you mentor? How do you give back mm -hmm. to the kids who are or, or the young adults who are at your schools and other HBCUs and other schools in general? Because what I know is you don't know to dream it if you don't know it exists. Mm -hmm. And you have to have that role modelship. You have to be that mentor. And the conversation happens organically once you have achieved. It's your it's you know your duty to reach back. It's your duty to bring those along with you. It's special and Sankofa, um, the African diaspora in the world is a class that you have to take. And it teaches you that. And it's about once you've received that, how are you going to pay it forward? Gerard, the, the thing that gets me um, when you begin to talk about these, this notion of giving that people don't quite understand, the, 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 there, are a lot of, there are a lot of people, Dan Gerard, there are a lot of people who don't realize that you look at the retention rate. Yeah. There are folks who can afford to come their first and second year. Right. Mm -hmm. But when they hit that third year, it changes. We see a tremendous drop off at Morehouse. Yeah. Uh, we see it at Spelman. I've gotten those when Julian Malvo was president at Bennett. Uh, these, these, you know, this emergency phone call or email. Look, we got to raise thirty thousand dollars in the next, you know, ten days to keep uh, these young women in school. And so. It, 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 when, I, when you talk to some folks, you say, well, what did you give? Well, well, you know, I gave something when I graduated, mm -hmm. you know, but then it's been 5, 10, 20, 30, right. 40, 50 years. And I'm going, well, how do you think you were able to go to a school because somebody else kept giving? Right, right. And, and a big piece of it is education. Um, a lot of people think that, oh, well, you know, tuition will take care of it and, and, and everything is, is, uh, is all good. But what we have to have help our alumni understand is that, you know, a lot of kids, first generation college students are coming in situations where they're being stretched with debt, right? And um, sometimes those And funds, their family has debt. Right, on top of that. Um, and and <clears throat> it, it requires a bridge, right? 
But if the narrative is not given in a certain way where people, it really strikes home, it's, it's hard sometimes for them to connect the dot. And one of the things that I love about the partnership we have with Gerard and Tradition and the HBC Alumni Alliance is that we're baking in a give back component in the apparel that we sell, um, that Gerard is selling to alum like me, where we can fund scholarships um, as well as Keisha uh, participated in our HBCU Run Walk um, seventh anniversary uh, three years ago, and we were able to raise $90,000 um, in just that one walk, run walk. So when we start participating and showing how we're giving money back, it gets contagious. But the thing is, and, and look, that I guarantee you there's somebody, and I've seen this before, there's somebody who's watching and they said, oh, you should be doing that, and Keisha, you should be giving back because you got the means. When I talk about giving, Florida A&M, 5% of the graduates give. When I interviewed the president of CAU last week, the giving of their alumni is around the national average, uh, same thing. I was at Lincoln University last week, their new incoming president, uh, Dr. Brenda Allen, said same thing, around the national average, 4%. Uh, the Wilberforce University president, when I was there this summer with the national alumni, when he got there, it was 1%. Mm -hmm. He said now he's up to 9%. Howard University president, he said when he got there, the undergraduate graduates of Howard, 3.7%, now it's up to 10%. We're not talking about okay, folks who give a thousand. No, we're talking about a dollar. Yeah. And, and I'm sorry, I don't care who you are. If you went to an HBCU, you can't convince me you cannot send your school 10 or $20. Yeah. You know, I think the yeah. bigger issue is that a lot of people don't realize that it doesn't have to be this gargantuan effort. You know, like you said, every little bit counts. Everything. Whether it's $10, $100, or $10,000. And sometimes, you know, that is what's necessary to tell people, hey, whatever you can do is welcome. And it's a tax write-off. Go ahead. And, and then judge. An another thing here is it's an extension of our community. We tend to take our dollars and go outside the community. So for the HBCUs, if you just number the people who've graduated or just attended the schools, like you said, it's not about the, the 10,000 donation, but give $5. The partnership that we have, part of it is, I'm not telling you just go buy tradition. Go to our myhbcugiveback.com, just give $5. If you can afford to give 10,000, do that, but it's all about paying it forward and you know, you're standing on the grounds that people who have the mere reason why these schools have been founded, you know, is the reason why you should give back. But, you know, part of what we've been doing is another way. There's two things I know about our community. We love to party and we love to dress. So I put a challenge out there. I don't name another brand that gives back. I don't know, not there one. There you go, Judge. Yeah, and I'll also say that we need to be practical. We don't need to be sending flowers to funerals. I'm just going to tell you. If that person passed away, send, say I'm sending a donation to CAU to Spelman to in Fisk, on behalf I mean, of in, in memory right. of I mean you know the flowers die and also we don't write wills I you know this is the lawyer talking to me Roland we need to write <laughs> wills and in our wills we need to say I am leaving X Y and Z to this institution now don't wait till you die to do it we should still be giving but we should also be thinking about how we sustain these institutions because we're losing them at alarming rates well also I think that you can also do this here you can also let's say you know we have so many programs and their awards and stuff now look if you are using a black awards and trophy company that's fine but if you not same thing yes. uh, say I'm not gonna give you a plaque we yes. sent that $50 uh, to this particular school on your behalf. Because trust Please. me, I got enough plaques. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Exactly. I, ain't got, I ain't got enough wall space uh, for the plaques. Uh, last thing. So, Eric, what's our HBCU Giving School Day? Uh, we, don't, we have an initiative, uh, HBCU Giving Day. We started this hashtag, HBCU Giving Day. And it's led to a lot of people say, you know what? You're right. I should have given it to my school. Eric, what's our school for today? Uh, so Spelman is a school for today, so pull it up. Uh, so pull it up right now, of course. Uh, Spelman is a school. Show the graphic, please, if you can. I know it's supposed to go later in the show. Uh, but uh, the website, it should be spelman.edu forward slash giving. And like I keep telling you, you can give 100, 75, 50, 25, 10, 5, a buck. It doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. But again, we want you to actually give uh, to do that and use your, uh, use your networks, connect with your folks, and challenge your fellow graduates. That's what you should do. Mm -hmm. Final comment. 
Um, the connectivity, and I'm so excited to be, you know, partnering with AT&T in this whole HBCU Love um, campaign that they're doing. This connectivity speaks to this panel right here and the zero degrees of separation that exists. Gerard with Traditions was actually my neighbor um, and when he was first starting the company and I happened to wear, you know, to the Delta Centennial, one of his um, uh, products. Then, you know, walk, working with the AUC Walk and of course, you know, love, love, love. And it's so important for us to stay connected. That's the power of HBCUs. We need to continue to pay it forward so that it's around for future generations. And part of that is the give back. All right then. Dude, you brought a bag. What's up? Why you well, I had to come. I know you're Aggie, a and so well, that's a more important. I'm Texas A&M. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I got, but I've spoken about 50 of the 100 HBCUs. So I got like a whole uh, gear closet uh, of stuff. What but you, one uh, thing, because Keisha started something that just ballooned. Right. We, we did something with Delta Sigma Theta. We're doing something with a scholarship with the East Point College Park chapter where we're doing a $5,000 scholarship and we're presenting it on oh, their cool. Founders Day. We want to echo that and we want to get to other fraternities and sororities, what we're doing with the Alliance and, and creating a give back and creating actual scholarships that a non-for-profit because you have to know how to give back. Right. Yeah. You know, give it from whatever angles, just give back. But, right. you know, we want you to sound the claw, call for your fraternity. Okay, so what, so what do you so what do you want to do with Alpha? I just... I, I need you to understand, the Alpha General President, Dr. Everett Ward, does not hold any meetings between 7 and 9 because he watches this show every day. <laughs> well, so you're, you're talking to the National President. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you this. I don't know what camera... I right just, there. I just don't want to be a vendor. I want to be a vendor that has a little bit more significance and meaning and touches the lives of people, paying it forward, excuse me, and um, looking out for those who are coming behind us. What we did right here is just a sweater, but there's a whole collection that's coming. Like I said, everybody, go out there and find. Find me another brand that is at your college campus. We are an authorized vendor on college campuses. Okay. We sell to retailers. Find another brand that gives a portion of their proceeds that goes back to the scholarships. Like I said, we do all colleges, but we emphasize heavily on HBCUs because we know the website? they've been overlooked. Our, our site is traditioneversince.com, and I'll give back. If you don't want to buy a product, go to myhbcugiveback.com. And like I said, just pay it forward. Give something. It's numbers. Numbers. It's all in numbers. All right, Dr. Ward, I'll be go. texting you in a second. There you go. All right, I appreciate it. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. All right, good to see you, darling. All right, then. All right. All right, Thank Aggie. Right. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh, my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't going to cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.